ويسر لي أمري وحلا أكتظا من لساني يفقه قولي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everyone to Muhammad Qasim's channel once again where we're discussing live uh, about the dreams of Muhammad Qasim and uh, today we are on our topic continuing from the uh, last week's topic about the Jal. Uh, in the last week's topic we discussed about the Jal's abilities, his appearance, um, what uh, the identity that the Jal will have uh, and today we are continuing on to our discussion about the Jal's specific appearance, uh, what events will happen, uh, what wars might happen uh, and how uh, the Jal's uh, closure will come or the end will come. We have already discussed uh, previously uh, in other live sessions uh, that we've got the uh, Malhama that will occur, the Malhamat al-Kubra, uh, which uh, happens in the Middle East. And uh, uh, while this war is happening, uh, Muhammad Qasim has seen that there are three pillars of Islam. Two of them fall, Turkey and Saudi Arabia. And when they two fall, uh, Muslims lose hope. Um, uh, about the situation, about what is happening uh, in uh, in the Muslim world. Uh, and then Islam rises again uh, from Pakistan. And the events that happen in Pakistan where uh, leadership change happens, uh, true Islam is implemented, shirk is removed uh, from all uh, aspects of the operations in the uh, society in Pakistan, uh, then Pakistan starts progressing. Uh, and that's when the Muslim Ummah rises again uh, and uh, liberates the uh, lost areas in the Middle East. After this comes a peace, era, a peace era or a time when uh, there's abundance of Allah's mercy. Uh, and then comes the fitna of the Jal. Uh, now, before we uh, go into the discussion today, obviously, we make a, an analysis from a Hadith perspective. We uh, briefly look at what the hadith say and then we look at a comparison from Muhammad Qasim's dream. Uh, what I wanted to allude to you is that uh, obviously uh, based on what Muhammad Qasim has seen, when the peace era comes, uh, because Muslims uh, go through Ghazwai Hin, uh, they go through these events uh, and you know the hadiths have mentioned about the arrival of the Jal uh, and the fitna of the Jal, then Muslims at that time, they are beginning to prepare against the Jal or his coming of the Jal. And as uh, I have mentioned in previous uh, discussions that uh, Muslims go through a phase where there's a significant technological development um, and some of the things that happens in the Muslim world uh, really puts back the, uh, the West, where the West as we see it today, they are the leaders of the uh, technological developments, uh, Muslims surpass that and they, they progress uh, significantly. And this all of this uh, actually begins from Pakistan. So today we will uh, look a little bit more into the hadiths that uh, relate to the location, uh, the appearance of the Jal, uh, the fitna that he will cause uh, while he's uh, there on earth. And uh, then we'll look at the closure and how the closure will uh, occur for the Jal. Inshallah. So we begin first with uh, some of our hadiths about the uh, fitna of the Jal. Uh, and uh, when the Jal uh, appears, some of the hadiths or some of the narrations that uh, uh, mention that. Uh, actually, while we're here, we might as well actually uh, review back uh, our last discussion. Uh, we identified uh, from the hadiths the identity of the Jal, that he'll be a young or middle-aged man. Uh, he will be blind, possibly in one eye. He'll have thick curly hair, he'll have a dark reddish complexion, <clears throat> strong, powerful body, but not very tall, uh, pigeon-toed or hand-toed uh, feet, uh, a wide forehead, a broad upper chest. Um, and <clears throat> for the believers, there will be uh, words written on his forehead, kafir, uh, and the believers will be able to see that on his uh, forehead. And then we also looked at what some of the abilities or powers or deception that the Jal will have. We uh, looked at the hadith and we concluded that, <coughs> excuse me, that the Jal will be uh, able to control what people see or feel. Um, and these will be, uh, you know, magical tricks that are performed. And uh, we also learned that the Jal will be learning 
uh, or has been learning about black magic and practices of black magic and has been increasing uh, his ability uh, in black magic then we also uh, uh, concluded that there will be a false image of hell and heaven that Dajjal will carry forward with him he will have the ability to travel fast like uh, Suleiman alayhi uh, salam once again Suleiman alayhi salam used to travel uh, with the help of jinns and Allah made it possible for him. Now, we're not saying that Suleiman uh, was practicing black magic. That was a specific ability that Allah allowed Suleiman uh, But the Jal will do so with the power of uh, black magic that uh, he, he has been gaining. Um, and then the Jal will also show promise, uh, you know, life of good, luxury, uh, women, food, uh, things that uh, I guess humans desire at a very basic level. Uh, and those uh, who will reject Dajjal, they will be persecuted and killed. Um, and uh, to the people on earth, Dajjal will appear as he's performing miracles, like bringing people uh, back from death, um, as uh, it is prominent in one of the hadiths. So the whatever Dajjal is able to do, uh, we concluded that it is not real. It will be a deception that Dajjal will display in front of people. Uh, and we'll look into a little bit more about that uh, as we go through some of the uh, hadiths and narrations in the hadiths, inshallah. So, as far as the location of the Jal is concerned, uh, many of the hadiths mention some locations. There are some hadiths that can conclude where uh, the Jal will come from, uh, but there are, uh, you know, other hadiths that have mentioned other places. Um, for instance, this hadith it says that the Jal. Uh, would appear on the way between Syria and Iraq and would spread mischief right and left. Now, uh, I'm not sure, uh, the, in, according to this hadith, where there is Syria and Iraq, the area in between that, uh, but the, there's a mention of Syria and Iraq, which is, once again, a very wide area. It includes a lot of the Middle Eastern countries. Um, then there's uh, other hadiths that are narrated by Trimidhi, uh, and Anas, in, in these hadiths, there is an indication that the Jal will appear from the land in the east called Khurasan. Um, and then there is another hadith uh, which also mentions the Khurasan area. We uh, did look at this area in the previous videos that it incorporates or it incorporates some area of uh, uh, predominantly Afghanistan, Iran, and some area of Pakistan and some of the northern areas where we have Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. So we concluded uh, that Khorasan was a wider area or a wider reference <clears throat> at that time. Uh, it could have been the Persia of that time, uh, but uh, anyway, that the, the discussion on that is not part of our uh, focus today. Uh, so the Jal will appear from the east, and the other hadith uh, says that the Jal will appear from uh, a city called Isfahan, which is in Iran, and he will be followed by seventy thousand Jews. Now, the reference, whenever in Arabic it's mentioned 70,000, it's not exactly the number 70,000. It just means that the number of people will be enormous. Uh, and uh, just a bit of commentary uh, about this hadith, actually. Uh, there are uh, Jews that live in Isfahan, uh, and uh, their uh, existence dates back to the Babylonian period. Uh, there are some connections that uh, some scholars have made. Uh, that uh, when Zulkarnain existed at the time and he was able to conquer East and West, there were a group of people that he went to and he liberated them uh, from oppression. And uh, it is commented that these people were the Jews. And uh, when the, the time came to release those people, ma majority of them went back to uh, their holy land in Jerusalem at that time. And then some of them came back uh, with Zulkarnain to his uh, area because he was from Persia, they came back and they settled in uh, in uh, Isfahan, which is the area known for today. Um, this is also apparent in some of the biblical narratives where the mention of King Cyrus is there. Uh, some of the scholars once again have made a connection that King Cyrus that, that is mentioned from a, a biblical history perspective is uh, the same as Zulkarnain because they've made some uh, imagery connections about Cyrus and Zulkarnain and once again the story is very similar that King Cyrus liberated some Jews uh, and uh, some of them came and settled uh, in uh, Isfahan which is uh, at that time it was the area of Persia where there was central management of King Cyrus.
anyway allah knows best uh, about about those uh, aspects uh, but we have these hadiths that indicate that the uh, dajjal will appear from this area uh, of the khurasan uh, area um, then again there is uh, um, hadith which also mentions uh, the khurasan area or the east once again east from uh, where uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was at that time which is in makkah and medina so uh, this hadith specifically mentions that behold he is in the syrian sea or the yemen sea uh, which is the mediterranean and arabian nay on the contrary he is in the east he is in the east he is in the east and uh, he pointed uh, and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet pointed with his hand towards the east um, and uh, this is a hadith that is narrated by uh, Fatima bin the case and uh, she remembers or she calls what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said. Um, then we have a uh, longer hadith. This uh, this hadith actually incorporates a lot of other things. We will pick up a couple of points from this hadith. Uh, main thing about the fitna of the jal that the jal will be able to travel to many places. Uh, but there are some places where he will not be allowed to enter. Uh, and uh, this hadith mentions that place. It says he would come but would not be allowed to enter the mountain passes to Medina. So he will alight at some of the barren tracks near Medina. Uh, and then uh, there's a mention about uh, the Jal. Uh, this is once again a famous uh, narration of the hadith that is uh, uh, explained and discussed by scholars. In this hadith, uh, or the, in this story, the the jal will kill a person and then he will bring back to uh, this person to life. Uh, but that person who uh, goes through this experience, uh, he will then say that I have no better proof uh, that you are the dajjal that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned because these hadiths will exist and when the time will come when the dajjal will perform or appear to perform this so-called miracle in front of people, uh, this person will recognize that this hadith was mentioned and this is what this person has done. Um, and then in another narration by Anas ibn Malik, we have a uh, mentioning once again that the Jal will travel, he will travel to every land where uh, humanity exists. So there will be no land which will be, which will not be trampled by the Jal, uh, but Makkah and al Madina will uh, be the ones that he will not be able to uh, enter because they will be guarded by angels. And the angels will uh, uh, will be there. And then the hadith further goes on to say that Jal will appear in a barren place adjacent to Al Madina, and the city will be shaken three times. <coughs> and then Allah will expel from uh, from it every disbeliever and hypocrite. And then uh, there's another hadith. Um, this is uh, uh, narrated uh, by Junada ibn Umayya. And it is mentioned in this hadith that uh, the Jal will stay amongst uh, the people for 40 days. There are also many other hadiths that mention the 40 days. Uh, there is a hadith that mentions the 40 days, a bit more explained that uh, one day will be like one year, one day will be like a month, and then one day will be uh, like a week, and then the rest of the 37 days will be like the normal uh, days. But anyway, there's a mentioning in the hadith about the 40 days, so we follow on with the uh, description of the 40 days uh, and during these days the Dayal will go to every place apart from four mosques uh, Masjid al-Haram, the uh, mosque in Medina uh, and the mosque of Sinai and Masjid al-Aqsa. These are mentioned in the, in the hadith. Excuse me. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so the, the, the Jal will emerge um, amongst the Ummah again for 40 days. And in this hadith, there is a mentioning of uh, Isa al Islam, and Isa al Islam uh, comes, um, comes and uh, he will be able to pursue and uh, kill the Jal. <clears throat> now, there are other hadiths that also mention this. There's a uh, a very long hadith uh, that is narrated by an nawas i mentioned this in my previous uh, lecture uh, and uh, i encourage you to look at this hadith because it actually explains uh, all the events that will happen uh, that are related to dajjal from the beginning till the end 
And in this hadith, uh, it is mentioned that uh, Allah would send uh, Isa alayhi salam, son of Maryam, uh, he will descend at the white minaret in the eastern side of Damascus, wearing two garments lightly dyed uh, and saffron, uh, with saffron and placing his hands on the wings of two angels. Um, and then there's a description about how his uh, uh, hair uh, are uh, full of water or they look like they're full of water and there will be uh, water dropping from his uh, hair. Uh, and then the hadith goes on to say that every non-believer who would smell the odor of uh, Prophet uh, Isa alayhi salam, uh, he will die as far as uh, his uh, smell or odors reach the non-believers will die and then uh, Isa alayhi salam will search the Jal and he would catch hold of him at the gate of Lud uh, which is uh, a, a city um, and uh, Isa alayhi salam would kill the Jal and then the hadith goes on to say that they uh, they are people uh, who will be with Isa alayhi salam at that time uh, Isa alayhi salam will meet those people uh, because of the troubles that they have gone through, the difficulties that they have gone through uh, with the, the, the Jal and the uh, time before the Jal, uh, Isa al -Islam will uh, console them in a way and uh, will inform them of their ranks in paradise. Now, these group of people in, in our previous um, uh, discussion, we mentioned that there was a group of people, uh, Ahdith mentioned there was a group of people who took part in Ghazwa Hin, and then there were a group of people who took part in um, or with, were with Isa alayhi salam. The hadith mentioned that these uh, groups of people, they were protected from the hellfire. Uh, and uh, what's once again is mentioning in here is that connection, uh, that those group of people who will be with, uh, uh, you know, the people in Ghazwa Hin and the people in Isa al Islam, there is a possibility that those groups of people may be the same and maybe some of them are, are the same, maybe all of them are the same, we don't know in reality. Uh, but what Muhammad Qasim has seen is that uh, he is uh, amongst the people who take part in Ghazwa Hin and then he is also amongst the people who uh, go to live with Isa al Islam. Um, so, as far as the conclusion of the hadiths is concerned, based on the narratives that have been presented and discussed, we can make a conclusion that uh, the Jal will definitely appear after the Malhama occurs, uh, and it will be from the Khurasan area, perhaps the Isfahan. Uh, once again, Allah knows best. Uh, the Jal will be initially mostly followed by the Jews, uh, and then he will spend 40 days on earth. W once again, the the description of those 40 days, one year like a uh, year, one year like a month, one day like a month, and one day like a week. Um, we are not clear on that perspective from uh, as far as what we understand from Mount Qasim stream. Uh, but what it indicates is perhaps that one day the fitna of the Jal will be so strong upon the believers that it will feel like it was one year. Uh, and then the other day will feel like it was one month and so on. Uh, but once again, Allah knows best about the details uh, on those. Uh, so the Jal will uh, spread the fitna quickly in the world and he will travel to many places in a short amount of time. Uh, we understand that uh, he will have the ability uh, uh, to do that, uh, perhaps through the power of the jinns that he will be able to control at that time. And then the Jal will also display unseen magic and abilities. Uh, these abilities like, you know, what we see in the superhero movies uh, where people are flying or uh, with their hands, they are moving things. Uh, those are the things that the Jal will be able to display and uh, people will follow him uh, because of their weak Iman and weak uh, understanding about uh, his fitna. People uh, will follow him very quickly. And then we know that those people who will oppose the Jal they will face death or they will face famine uh, according to the hadiths and then uh, we also have made a connection that the jal will not be able to enter a few places namely makkah Medina, and mount sinai and uh, masjid al-aqsa area uh, and then we uh, have the end of the jal where after the 40 days isa -Islam will uh, return to earth and the jal will finally be killed now as far as muhammad qasim's dreams are concerned uh, Muhammad Qasim has actually seen many dreams uh, about the 
fitna of the jal but also in addition to the fitna of the jal Muhammad qasim has seen the system of the jal and as we uh, mentioned in in the previous uh, discussion that the jal is not just a uh, figure that exists or will appear at a time uh, we know from the hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that there were a group of christians who traveled to him and they had an experience where they went to an island and they met the jal and the jal mentioned things to them uh, and uh, we know from that experience that the jal existed at that time and will appear now in that appearing time we uh, also mentioned that the jal is uh, uh, he's gathering his uh, black magic abilities his powers and uh, as we mentioned about the dream of uh, muhammad qasim that he saw the jal was uh, harnessing or storing power uh, black magic power which is also once again something that is common to do amongst the sorcerers and magicians uh, so uh, the jal will be able to uh, develop all these strengths uh, before he comes into the arrival but before the jal actually comes or gets his appearance muhammad qasim has seen that from the background uh, there are <clears throat> accomplices of the jal uh, accomplices of the jal meaning they are organizations or structures that exist that are uh, preparing for the jal or awaiting the jal's uh, coming and uh, they are getting instructions from the jal or they are preparing things in the world to uh, develop to a stage or develop the community or the world to a stage where there will be an easier acceptance of the jal uh, so uh, according to uh, muhammad qasim streams he has seen that these uh, accomplices or these uh, people who support the Dajjal or who work for the Dajjal, uh, they are bodies uh, or they are groups of people that uh, some of them also govern, but uh, they also control the operations uh, in this world. And Muhammad Qasim has seen this influence in many of his dreams uh, that these uh, individuals, they are the ones that uh, actually cause uh, the establishment of modern systems of slavery, uh, the democratic uh, capitalism that we see in the world today. Uh, and many uh, conspiracy theorists have talked about this, uh, not just uh, Muslim conspiracy theorists, but others um, who uh, have come from a rational thinking background uh, from the West. They have also talked about the existence of these organizations and how they control the world. Um, so there's... Uh, uh, you can search about uh, the existence of these opinions and what people have said uh, online on YouTube. Uh, there's plenty of videos, but anyway, the system of the Jal is the one that uh, is preparing for the Jal's arrival, and uh, they are slowly creating a society where uh, humanity uh, is basically enslaved. So when the Jal comes and frees the humanity, he will be seen or the Jal will be seen as a figure, uh, uh, a godly figure that is saving the people. So <clears throat> may Allah protect us from all these uh, difficulties. Um, when uh, Muhammad Qasim has also seen that uh, when he's spreading uh, the message of his dreams, the uh, majority of the Muslim Ummah, um, they are oblivious and they don't accept his dreams. Um, and he has also seen in many of his uh, dreams that the Jal is actually the one who is behind this. That the Jal uh, knows that Muhammad Qasim is uh, spreading his dreams and he's spreading the message of Islam uh, to come back to the uh, Islam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the Jal is able to uh, spread his influence or magic uh, to make those people blind so that they are unable to see the uh, true reality. Uh, about Muhammad Qasim and what Muhammad Qasim is telling his audience. <clears throat> um, also within this system uh, of the Jal, uh, he, uh, Muhammad Qasim has also seen that uh, the influential people, when Muhammad Qasim is spreading his dreams and he reaches out to the influential people and he tries to explain his dreams to them, even they uh, are made deaf or mute and he has seen that uh, uh, in his dreams that they are made deaf or mute by the Jal and they are not able to understand uh, Muhammad Qasim's message. Uh, and Muhammad Qasim then uh, saw in his dream also in multiple occasions that only the people who have the special mercy of Allah with them, uh, that they are able to see and understand uh, Muhammad Qasim's dreams and the message in those dreams. Uh, and then those are the people who feel compelled to come and help 
Muhammad Qasim spread his streams. Um, <clears throat> Muhammad Qasim has also seen in previous streams that uh, uh, USA and Israel, they build a temple. Uh, it's a light brown colored building that he has seen in his stream. And this temple is being prepared specifically for the Jal. Uh, and this temple is uh, being established in Jerusalem uh, or Palestine area. And uh, in one of the dreams, Muhammad Qasim saw the specific, um, specifically that the Israel's prime minister at the time uh, met the American president. Uh, and in the dream, Muhammad Qasim saw that the minister, prime minister of Israel said, I have almost completed the secret temple of the Jal and soon only the name of Palestine will be left and then we will rule the entire Middle East. Uh, this was a dream of Muhammad Qasim, uh, after which he has obviously seen or uh, he, he was shown uh, about the events of Malhama and World War III. And Muhammad Qasim has uh, uh, said this many times that the uh, planning of the uh, World War III or the middle, in the Middle East, the Malhama is actually a plan of the Jal um, and uh, the system of the Jal plans that uh, World War III. Now, when we come to uh, uh, this narrative and we understand how the Malhama happens and then the uh, the Jal appears. So um, the Jal will come after the Malhama. And uh, as I mentioned earlier in this video, that this will be a time uh, that there will be a peace period of uh, seven years when Muslims will be preparing for the arrival of the Jal. They will have the technology. They will have the uh, ability to uh, prepare uh, you know, uh, maybe atomic warfare or other warfare that will be uh, really high tech. Uh, but when the Jal comes or is uh, able to come into the world, he will uh, bring with himself, uh, you know, some miracles or some abilities that will persuade people to go to him. Um, and then the war once again will be between the uh, falsehood and the truth. Uh, which is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned uh, that the, the Jal is going to be the biggest fitna since the arrival of Adam alayhi salam into this world, and this is about the separating the true believers from those who have the weak belief uh, in Allah. Uh, and once again, the the war that happens with the Jal is for the survival of Islam, uh, just like it was for uh, Ghazwa Hind. Um, in, in the past that happens. Um, so when the Jal appears, uh, initially uh, the uh, the Jal will be traveling to many places at a very quick amount of uh, time uh, and he's able to persuade many people to go alongside with him very quickly. Uh, but Muslims, Muhammad Qasim says that Muslims, uh, when they see that even their own families and people in their own countries, they are going towards the Jal, they get together and they decide to launch a final war or final uh, plan against the Jal. Uh, and in this war or in this um, event that occurs, Muslim forces, they engage uh, the Jal and his army. And once again, the, by the time that the Jal comes out of the peace sphere or seven years and the way that he is able to capture uh, a lot of people, he has already, the Jal has already built a lot of uh, power in the world. Uh, he's developed a lot of uh, army or people that are supporting him. So uh, Muslims engage in the war. They, uh, Muslims use their high-tech weaponry and heavy missiles. And um, when they launch them against the Jal and his army, uh, the Jal is able to finish them off. And uh, what Muhammad Qasim describes in his dream, uh, it seems like the, the, those missiles and everything, they were like uh, firecrackers to the Jal. Uh, so they don't cause any uh, damage to uh, the Jal or his army. Uh, but Muhammad Qasim has also seen in his dreams that the Muslims engage with the Jal and he himself has seen him, uh, himself fighting uh, against the Jal in this war. But the Jal is able to overpower the Muslim armies uh, and destroy their ranks and legions. Um, they are also uh, in this war. Uh, there are destructions to the um, uh, the Jal's army as well, but they're not as much as uh, the destruction to the Muslim army. Uh, and Muhammad Qasim says that he has seen that many Muslims die at their shaheed in this war, uh, fighting against the Jal and his armies. So the Jal obviously uh, creates a 
uh, fitna. Uh, he fills the world before this war uh, with uh, sectate, illicit acts, debauchery, adultery, and everything that is against, uh, you know, in the Quran, the, the acts that are um, classed as sins uh in the quran and how uh, the sunnah of uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches us to avoid them uh, the jal actually promotes them and promotes that life as a heaven on earth uh, and he's able to do this for about four to five weeks until the descent of hazrat isa alayhi salam so once again muslim armies are struggling they are fighting with the jal but they're losing uh, until the time of the uh, comes so the four to five weeks now while we're here it is important to uh, maybe mention some of the points uh, about the 40 days uh, when uh, i was discussing about this in detail uh, muhammad qasim says that he does not see the first day being one year second day being a month or third day being a week uh, but what he understands is that the the, the jal will come and he will spread his fitna into the world now where the places where he's not able to go to for example the uh, cities of Medina and Mecca um, for those cities or those areas Muhammad Qasim says that he has seen that because the Jal is not able to enter them but he still uh, causes fitna within those cities and the way that he causes fitna is that uh, he the Jal is able to uh, restrict the food in those areas or restrict the water supply in those areas uh, and then people because of uh, lack of food or lack of water or lack of other things maybe the child is able to send storms or something um, because of lack of that uh, many muslims who are of weak faith in the areas they leave those cities and they go to meet the job now lahu alam uh, but maybe it is that when the time comes for the muslims uh, to be in those areas and the test happens of the jal uh, that one day the, of the jal being there it actually feels like one year uh, once again this is something that uh, is my understanding but i'm uh, this is not something that is uh, going to be true so uh, don't don't take it as truth but this is my opinion uh, about what might be happening but mama Qasim has seen that the places where uh, the jal is not able to enter uh, he still causes difficulty for the muslims in those areas where those that are of the weak or uh, imam they will then leave the uh, the areas and join the child uh, because the child on the other hand he has uh, established uh, uh, a false imagery of uh, you know heaven on earth uh, and he's showing people that if you're with me you have uh, all the food all the drinks and everything that you need but if you're not with me you're against me uh, you go through these difficulties or you go through the famine or you go through the problems so um, <clears throat> the jal is able to carry uh, this over the 40 days and then there's the uh, arrival of isa al -Islam, and muhammad qasim has clearly seen in his dreams um, that isa al -Islam descends to earth from the sky uh, and he is accompanied by two angels uh, and uh, Muhammad Qasim uh, has described Isa al -Islam, that he has black, wet-looking hair, uh, and he re resembles the character of a Middle Eastern person. And Muhammad Qasim says that uh, after the war, when Muslims take a heavy loss, they uh, leave and they uh, then join Isa al -Islam, uh, where Isa al -Islam lands. Uh, and then Muhammad Qasim uh, says that this is the around the time when the Jal is killed and also the Yajuj and Majuj also appear. And we have the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam about this, uh, where uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has mentioned that the final uh, events that will occur um, at the time of the uh, closer to Qayyama, the uh, major uh, signs of Qayyama, which is the arrival of the Jal, the uh, arrival of Isa al -Islam, and the Yajuj or Majuj, uh, all these events will happen like beads falling from uh, from a string. So Muhammad Qasim has seen them exactly as that, that they happen one after the other, uh, that the uh, uh, fitna of the Jal, uh, although it's there for 40 days, uh, but it happens in in a matter of quick seconds. Uh, that the, the, the Jal comes, uh, Isa al -Islam comes, he, uh, the, the Jal dies, and then Yajuj Majuj uh, also come in and they arrive. Now, as far as protection against the Jal is concerned, 
uh, we have the uh, hadiths of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, where he has uh, clearly left beneficial uh, advice for the Muslim Ummah. Uh, one of uh, them is about memorizing the uh, opening and closing verses of uh, Surah Al-Kahf. The first ten verses of Surah Al-Kahf. Many um, scholars uh, have discussed these hadiths in detail. Uh, there is also another hadith. Uh, where uh, the uh, wife of Prophet uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Aisha radhiyallahu taala anha, she has uh, uh, described the prayer that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make uh, during his uh, salah, uh, and in the salah he used to ask uh, refuge from Allah uh, for the torment of the grave, for the fitna of the jal, um, and uh, from the trials of life and death. Uh, and this is something uh, that uh, it is encouraged that all Muslims uh, memorize these uh, beautiful um, uh, du'as that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make uh, and make that a habit in their in their life. Um, what Muhammad Qasim has seen about this in terms of protection of the child, of course, we have mentioned that uh, only the people who have a special mercy. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the ones that are protected from the jal. But he has also uh, seen in his dreams that because the jal is a great trial, um, he has seen that uh, the uh, instructions left by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about uh, protecting or keeping yourself safe from the fitna of the jal, uh, that is the best protection. So, uh, memorizing Surah, Surah Al Kahf, uh, very important. It is recommended for all the Muslims. Uh, because as we know from uh, the uh, dreams of Muhammad Qasim, uh, that these events are going to happen within our generation. Uh, so we must try to protect ourselves as best as we can and follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the other hand, Muhammad Qasim has also seen that when he is engaged in the war and the fight uh, against the Jal, uh, he has regularly recited the three quls, uh, the uh, of the last chapter of the Quran, uh, everyone is recommended to uh, memorize them as well and uh, read them regularly on a daily basis uh, for, for protection, inshallah. So, uh, this concludes our session for today in terms of the topic of uh, the Jal that we uh, were going to cover. So, we have discussed about the Jal, the abilities that the Jal will have, uh, and the fitna that the Jal will cause. Um, the identity that the child will have and the uh, eventual situation that will happen uh, in the world. Uh, and as we know from Muhammad Qasim's dreams, the descriptions that he has seen about the Jal, they are very similar to that uh, narrations of the hadiths. Uh, the abilities that and the powers that Muhammad Qasim has seen, they complement and add more detail to what the Jal will be able to do. Uh, and we now seem to understand how powerful these uh, uh, persuasions will be from the Jal. Uh, and then we also understand how the uh, system of the Jal has existed for a very long time. Uh, and it is slowly coming to uh, our lifetime within our generation that we will see the fulfillment of their ideology uh, when the arrival of the Jal will come uh, and the fitna uh, is caused on earth. Now, inshallah, next week we will talk a little bit more in detail about Yajuj wa Majuj. Uh, we will look uh, into the details that are uh, presented in the Quran, the uh, story of Zulkarnain and uh, the Hadith narrations, and exactly what Muhammad Qasim has seen. Uh, and Muhammad Qasim actually describes Yajuj and Majuj or Gog and Magog uh, in his dreams. He has seen them physically. Uh, and we will discuss a little bit more about those physical appearances of Yajuj or Majuj as well. So let's have a look at some of the questions. Um, and uh, hopefully we will be able to clarify uh, these for our audience. Okay. According to Brother Kasim's, which year can we expect the Jal to come? Can someone answer me, please? Now, um, Putting a timeline to this, uh, once again, it is uh, difficult for us to say. We can only estimate. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But as we said in our previous video, that it is likely going to be uh, 15 to 20 years time frame where we, as per our estimation and analysis, we are expecting the time of the child to come. Uh, we also mentioned that uh, in the previous hadith that the 
time of Ghazwahin, uh, there's a possibility that this will be happening in the next five years or seven years, something around that. Allah knows best, of course. Uh, once again, we can only make an estimation. Muhammad Qasim has not seen any specific dates, uh, but uh, this is based on what we understand uh, about the dreams and our uh, predictions that we make based on those dreams. But uh, it's not to say that they are going to be true, so don't uh, write it down as the time uh, to be true. Allah knows best. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone uh, who has joined us. Uh, thank you very much for coming and joining us today and showing support about these important discussions. Uh, good to see some of uh, the familiar faces, some of the brothers and sisters that I know. Uh, mashallah, good to see people from India and Bangladesh and uh, Pakistan who are joining in and Indonesia and Malaysia. Mashallah, uh, very good to have you all here. Uh, let's have a look. Some more questions. Uh, I'm looking for questions. If you are here and you know if you've got some important questions, please do mention them uh, because it is good while we're having this discussion, we can clarify uh, some of the misconceptions uh, that may exist. Okay. And there's a question, how, how powerful is the Jal? Can the Jal summon asteroid from the sky? Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure whether the Jal will be able to summon an asteroid from the sky or not. Uh, but what we learn from the Hadiths and from the dreams of Muhammad Qasim is that the Jal will be able to excel in the practice of black magic and he will be able to establish uh, a really high, high level uh, where he is able to deceive and show people things that uh, don't exist. In, in the hadiths we uh, read about uh, or we heard about the ability of the Jal to bring up treasures from the earth, uh, the ability of the Jal to bring rain where he wants to and the ability of the Jal to take away rain and make the land barren where he doesn't want to. So these will be the abilities that he will have developed at the time that he comes out. Um, also, uh, there was a mention about the, uh, another hadith where uh, 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 the mentioning of a Bedouin and the conversation between a Bedouin and the Jal occurs, where the Bed the Jal mentions to the Bedouin that, will you believe in me if I bring your father and mother in front of you? Uh, and then the uh, in the hadith, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam says that the, the Jal will then uh, get two demons or two jinns to come in front of that person who will impersonate the image of uh, his father and mother and then that Bedouin or that person will then accept the Jal and say yes you brought my mother and father back I accept you Nauzu billah that you're my lord um, may Allah protect us from from the fitna uh, surely he will have very uh, strong abilities and powers that will be able to convince many people Muhammad Qasim has seen that uh, even a person with a very strong uh, you know, faith, and when they come in front of the Jal, they, uh, they will be weakened. Uh, Muhammad Qasim has seen that the Jal is able to change his form into very scary forms. So in front of the people who accept him, he appears as a very, very pleasant human being. But in the person uh, in front of people who reject him, he appears as a very fierce or uh, scary monster uh, and in some of the dreams Muhammad Qasim has seen uh, the size of the Jal to be as big as buildings. Uh, Allah knows best uh, but what we learn from this or understand from this is that the Jal will be able to uh, show an imagery or deceive people uh, with what they will be able to see uh, and a lot of this obviously will not be true because uh, uh, you know this is just a test uh, from Allah. Uh, that Allah has granted these abilities and powers to the Jal, so Allah can separate the true believers from those who have uh, a weak belief. Thank you for that question. The Jal is absolutely the great trial for humanity. Yes, that is correct. Uh, okay.
I have question in this fourth level of the chala. I just want to measure how powerful uh, the chala is. I've answered this question, uh, but you can look back at our last week's topic. Uh, there are some more details in uh, in there about the fitna of the chala. Okay, do the disbelievers have already identified who is the Jal now? If yes, why is he not publicly known? Um, well, obviously, when the Jal comes, the, the imagery that the Jal will show to the people is uh, what we understand from the hadiths is first that he will show that he's a uh, prophet or he's a, uh, the Messiah that people are waiting for. And then after that, when people start accepting him, then he will change uh, his opinion and he will start claiming that he's uh, God knows uh, as far as the identity of the Jal is concerned from a disbelievers perspective obviously this is a long-standing conspiracy and uh, it is something that they are preparing for um, what they believe about uh, the Jal uh, we don't really know the full reality of it uh, perhaps you can watch some more videos on YouTube about what other conspiracy theorists say uh, perhaps there's truth to what they have observed and and you know they will mention to you about the things uh, uh you know that they have observed about these cult followings of uh, the child uh, but his identity is not going to be publicly known until he uh, uh the child is willing to come out uh with his appearance on a public note and how he delivers that uh allah knows best uh but surely it will come within our time frame and yes, that is right. The Jal can shape shift so uh, he can change his appearance to any person he likes. Uh, so we don't know. Uh, anyway, while on, we are on this point, there's uh, actually uh, a very good video that you can watch. Uh, it was of a very high ranking priest or rabbi um, in the Israel. And uh, when the Benjamin Netanyahu, he, uh, he was uh, seen that he came to um a place of worship and uh, that very highly ranked rabbi or uh, he communicated to uh, benjamin Netanyahu, and he said we must prepare for the coming of the messiah he must come very soon uh, the time is very short um, and uh, we we have seen those other evidences and all those ev other evidences they actually complement the dreams of muhammad qasim about what he has seen and how you know uh, Jerusalem got taken over uh, while there was uh, President Trump's, uh, sorry, Trump's uh, presidency existed at that time. Um, so the dreams that Muhammad Qasim had were were before that. Uh, so there's definitely things happening within the world that point to the coming of the Jal being very soon. Before the Jal appears, will we be able to recognize who he who he is? Uh, now, Muhammad Qasim has seen uh, the Jal that he has fought with the Jal. He has seen uh, the figure of the Jal, but he's not able to uh, describe the figure of the Jal. Uh, in fact, he has actually mentioned that we are not supposed to approach the Jal. Now, this was also apparent from the hadith of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the uh, famous story about a guy named Sayyid who was uh, rejecting Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and not believing in him. Uh, and uh, Hazrat Umar ta'ala anhu at that time he said that I will go and kill this person. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied back to him that even if he is the Dajjal, you cannot do anything to him because Allah has granted him uh, an existence and something that he will do until the end of times. Um, but surely, obviously, when when the time comes, uh, we will all know. It's not, it's not for us to recognize someone and make this person public uh, that this is the such and such person. Uh, it is not for us to know exactly who that is. And uh, unfortunately, Muhammad Qasim has not made that clear about any any particular person. So we do not know who this is going to be. Uh, Allah, wallahu alam. Hopefully, closer to the time. Uh, when uh, you know the Jal, uh, the Jal's arrival comes, uh, we will know. But the best thing that we can do to protect ourselves, instead of knowing about who the Jal is, is to practice good uh, uh, deen, uh, to get closer to Allah, so Allah blesses us 
uh, with uh, the closeness and with, with the protection. Uh, and we continue to ask Allah from our dua and our prayers uh, uh, for protection from the fitna of the Jal, inshallah. Uh, Um, our food will be reciting La ilaha illallah and alhamdulillah on those days according to the hadith. Uh, I have not come across that hadith, but uh, Brother Amir Khan, if you can mention uh, a link, please uh, mention that through. Uh, hopefully, and uh, inshallah, there will be a time that will come when uh, people will be able to prepare for that. Obviously, uh, people know that the child will exist and obviously people will know when the era of peace comes. So there will be a time when people uh, will be able to prepare and inshallah, uh, Allah by his mercy will grant us the, the ability to be able to prepare for that time, uh, inshallah. Memorize first and last 10 ayahs of Surah Qahaf it will be protection against the Jal by the mercy of Allah indeed. And every Friday recite Surah Qahaf as well indeed. It is recommended uh, for all Muslims and this is something that uh, Brother Qasim has also recommended that we follow the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to uh, protect ourselves from the job. Uh, there are some people who are mentioning about their dreams. Thank you very much. I will just read some of them uh, perhaps here. Um, this person who's come up with the name online shopping i saw a dream after watching muhammad qasim's video that me and my mother were going to meet imam mahdi subhanallah uh, blessed dream for you may allah make it mubarak for you in real life as well uh, but yes this is another thing that we see from the uh, dreams of muhammad qasim that obviously if the malhama is going to be there if the Dajjal is coming, then uh, according to the hadith about Imam al-Mahdi, the Imam al-Mahdi will also come within our lifetime, inshallah. All right, some questions about uh, Shabash Sharif. Uh, where are we? What happens to the rest of Islamic leaders during the reign of Dajjal? If Dajjal is human being, who is the name and his religion? Um, I think you uh, can find a lot of commentary about this on the uh, notes of what the scholars have mentioned. Um, I'm not qualified to give you more detail about this from a religious perspective. Uh, the uh, deen or the knowledge of people of uh, the scholars uh, of Islam, they will be able to give you more information. So I encourage you to learn a bit more about the Jal from the perspective of what the uh, Deen presents. Um, and uh, over here, we're just analyzing the uh, dreams of Muhammad Qasim uh, based on the description of the hadiths uh, that we have. The will the Jal be able to use some kind of science and magic in the same time? Uh, Wallahu alam. As I mentioned, that it is. The, with the power of black magic <clears throat> that the Jal will be able to perform some of his things that will be called miracles. Uh, perhaps science could be a part of it. Of course, uh, it has to be if the Jal is able to bring, uh, you know, rain in some areas and not rain in some other areas. But uh, it will also involve uh, the help of uh, the jinns uh, and the black magic that he is able to practice. I have a question. Ya Juj, Ma Juj will be like a punishment for those who follow the Jal. I mean, Muslims will be with Isa al Islam and Ya Juj, Ma Juj will be open on the disbelievers as a punishment, right? Um, as far as this is concerned, once again, more knowledge is uh, with the uh, scholars of Islam. You can uh, investigate that a little bit more. We'll discuss about Ya Juj and Ma Juj uh, next uh, week in detail. Uh, as far as the uh, coming of Yajuj and Majuj are concerned, this is a promise of Allah uh, to the people at the time of Zulkarnain uh, that the Yajuj and Majuj will be released. Uh, obviously, as far as we understand, Yajuj and Majuj are a species. Um, they are uh, perhaps not human, but like 
human beings uh, and uh, they have their own life that they will go through so uh, they will reign on the earth and they will reign on the believers and the disbelievers uh, this is what i understand and i know as far as the hadith knowledge is concerned uh, but we will discuss uh, what the narrative of muhammad qasim is in more detail next week uh, about the topic of yajuj and majuj uh, sorry, there was that question uh, that I missed. Uh, is Shabash Sharif knows about Muhammad Qasim dreams? Please do go and tell Shabash Sharif about Muhammad Qasim dreams. We really want the message of Muhammad Qasim's dreams to be spread in Pakistan. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we have tried to reach out to the uh, people who are, uh, you know, in a higher presence in uh, important places. Uh, but we have not got the uh, positive response from them. Uh, perhaps they are all aware of the dreams and they're waiting for some important event to occur. Allah knows best. Uh, but we certainly hope that uh, they will be able to understand the dreams because uh, according to Mount Qasim dreams, the real turnaround happens from Pakistan. And the more people in Pakistan that know about the dreams, uh, they will then be able to uh, create uh, something within the country that will help the people who are at the top they will think about Muhammad Qasim dreams and then plan according to his dreams uh, this is what brother Qasim has seen in his uh, dream uh, the jal will appear after Imam Mahdi is bay right which why is there still many who will follow the jal and have Muhammad Qasim seen such okay I'm a bit confused about this question but I'll try to understand as best as I can. So uh, there's a time of peace, a period of peace that Muhammad Qasim has seen, which happens for uh, close to a decade, uh, as Muhammad Qasim uh, says. Now, after this period is when the Jal comes. Um, so based on the hadiths and what we understand, uh, the uh, role of Imam al-Mahdi, Imam al-Mahdi comes um, at the time of uh, Malhama, and then uh, there's uh, the war or situation is happening. Um, Imam al-Mahdi will be with the uh, uh, black banners. Uh, and as far as we know uh, from Muhammad Qasim's dreams, the black banners are the uh, black fighter jets that he has seen in his dreams. Uh, so anyway, yes, a short answer to your question is that the Dajjal will appear after the uh, um, bayt of Imam al-Mahdi. Uh, once again, we don't know about the specific dates, inshallah. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Amir Khan. I uh, will look forward to that link, inshallah. Uh, there was uh, a mentioning here. Talha, did you follow or know the teachings of Sheikh Imran Hussain about the job? I have read and watched a lot of videos uh, some of them are also from Sheikh Imran Hussain uh, it's not that I uh, accept one person's narrative over other person's narrative um, I look at the entire data and I try to make sense of it as far as some of the things that Sheikh Imran Hussain has said unfortunately I don't agree uh, to them he has made an analysis based on his knowledge and experience um, so we are not here to uh, make a connection or agree or say this person is right that person is wrong we are looking at objective evidence that is uh, that exists in hadiths and then we are making a connection based on what muhammad qasim has seen but the purpose of these videos is to uh, bring you closer to understanding muhammad qasim's dreams uh, and obviously it would, we encourage you to go back and look at the uh, dreams of muhammad qasim in more detail about what he has seen uh, what we cover in here is more of a summary uh, but more of the details are actually present in the dream videos and they are also available on this channel um, many people in my country didn't know about Muhammad Qasim dreams well my brother that is uh, a very important thing uh, it is a very important thing uh, for you and other people who are watching to spread the message of these dreams. Uh, Muhammad Qasim has seen that the primary objective that was given to him 
uh, was to spread the message of his dreams to the Muslim Ummah. He saw Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam come into his dream uh, in 2014, and he, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, came twice in his dream and told him to spread the message of his dreams to the world. And Muhammad Qasim has seen that there are people from all across the world who come and join him when they understand about his dreams and they help him spread the message of his dreams. So I do encourage you all uh, at whatever capacity you have uh, within your family, within your local community, go speak to the ulamas, to the scholars and discuss about Muhammad Qasim's dreams. First of all, understand Muhammad Qasim's dreams, read about his dreams, watch the videos uh, and uh, understand what the message is behind his dreams uh, and then spread the message. Uh, so we will take closure uh, on, on this. Um, it's getting a bit late and this topic has uh, gone off a little bit more than what I had intended. Uh, thank you all for joining today uh, and may Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from the fitna of the Dajjal, protect our families uh, and uh, give us the tawfiq and ability to uh, practice and learn what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given advice about uh, you know, protecting us from the fitna of the Dajjal. Uh, peace and blessings to all of you uh, and uh, I hope we'll see you inshallah in the, the next week's topic about Yajuj and Majuj. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.